Hi there, Leos. Welcome to your weekly reading. For those who are celebrating Thanksgiving in the United States, I wish you all the very best and have a wonderful time with your family. Stay safe. Um, I have a message, uh, an image that came in, and so I'm going to relay that, and that's going to set the tone for the foundation of this reading, and then we'll go into the energy for the spread that I have laid out here. So, first of all, I see you... Um, Kind of, it looks like a medieval knight, but it's somebody who's like may, maybe like a squire, and um, I see a like a a tower, a tower, and uh, so you're in a field. There's a tower, so you're in a field, you're in a field, and there's a tower right there, and it seems to me like you live in that tower or you train in that tower. But I see you kind of, um, you walk out into the field and there's like grains and wheat and you're just running around having fun doing your cartwheels, kind of running around. I, I see you alone. And then um, far away there's like the woods and then there's this person. It's not a menacing person. There's a person on a horse. And they're charging towards you. And when you see them, you automatically run back into your tower and you lock the door. And then that, that person on the horse, they go away. And then when you see that they've gone away, then you come out and you play around your tower. And then you might even taunt the person on the horse. And then they come running back to you and then you run back into your tower. So that that's the message I'm getting. And... Um, you know that the tower stands for safety. It stands for like this safe refuge or this this place of haven, where we can always come back to when life deals us a blow. And um, I I feel there is a sense here where it can feel over time like your geographical location might be very very limited. So let's just say, okay, if the tower is in the middle, right? You're you're bounded by the the circumference like the you can only roam so far okay because it, it's a place of refuge so you can always retreat back to it so you are only going to be able to you know uh, venture so far away from it before you start to feel that sense of anxiety like oh no you know am I going to be able to run back in time if it rains am I going to be able to make it without getting wet if there's uh, somebody chasing after me, am I? And they're on horseback, and I'm on, you know, I'm 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 running um, with my legs alone. Am I going to be able to get back before they catch up to me? So you're definitely there's an element here about being bounded by your geography, and for some of you, honestly, I feel like it could be, you know. The environment that you're in, um, are there jobs that are appropriate to your field or to your area of expertise? Okay, so like, for example, um, you might be, you know, this is an extreme example just to get my point across. You might be a marine biologist and you live in the desert, okay, and you're just like, where are all the marine biologist uh, jobs? So you look online or, you know, you surf the internet or you read the newspaper and you're looking for a marine biologist position or vacancy and you're just like, when is it going to happen for me? So that's an extreme situation, okay? Um, you have to go where life is calling, okay? You have to step out of your comfort zone. You have to go where life is calling you. I feel for many of you too, um, I keep seeing somebody who's like, um, let's say you grow up in one city, right? You move away for college, and then as soon as you graduate college, you move back to that city. So wherever you grow up, you move away for college, and then you, you come back. And um, because it, it's safe, because after, after that big milestone in your life, being far away from home, you feel homesick or you feel like, oh, you know, I've already done my fun. I've already put in my four years. I've already lived on my own. I should move back. And then I see some of you move back and then you move away for, for example, grad school. And then you have like an amazing time. And then after grad school, you automatically just bounce back like tether. It feels like something is tethering you to it. And for you, it could be family. For you, it could be that familiarity. 
But I definitely feel a cycle in your life is getting ready to wrap up and you kind of need to move forward and you kind of need to move on, okay? So what we have here is the world. So this is like expansiveness, opportunities knocking on your door, things opening up for you. But the nature of a fixed sign and especially your sign, you're very, very homebound and you're very, very family oriented. And I also feel like as much as you want to travel and have fun and explore, you reserve those things for things that you can do on a weekend, things that you can do on holiday, things that you can do on vacation. You don't feel like life can be lived that way for whatever reason. And so this is a card about great expansion, but it, it's also a double-edged sword because that uh, bunny is encased in this bubble. And so it's almost like, uh, nibbling at life rather than living it fully, okay? So there's a lot of fear I'm sensing, fear about change and the unknown. Um, you have a travel opportunity coming up here. So um, the chariot usually indicates to me some travel over land, relocation and things like that. But you are very conflicted, okay? Emotionally, you're very conflicted because once again, there is my place of refuge, but there's like a whole world of opportunities out there for me. And so I feel like the time period where you are keeping yourself, you know, within like that 10 mile radius, kilometers, whatever you want to call it, there is a radius. And for whatever, it's self-imposed. And for whatever reason, you don't feel like you can step out of it. You don't feel it's safe. You, f you are quite fearful, I'm sensing. Um, this is a card about finances. Okay, so I definitely feel many of you are, are at a point where you are keeping track of how much you're earning. And I, I feel like this process about um, nickel and diming yourself, being very thrifty with your spending. And I feel for many of you, you might be saving up for a car. Okay, with the chariot card, movement by land. You might be saving up for a car. You might be saving up for a plane ticket. You might be saving up to implement this next major move in your life. And so you're being very thrifty. You're being very uh, calculating with how much money you're realistically able to spend. And you're trying to save up, which is a very noble, honorable thing to do. And I feel like, you know, over time, I would say by the summertime of next year, 2019, I feel like you're going to sail over financial hurdles. So whatever you're experiencing right now, keep saving, okay? Put that intention in mind that I'm not just saving just to be stingy. I'm saving because I have these goals in the back of my mind. Whenever we have good intentions and whenever we have a clear um objective in mind as to why we are saving the universe will always give us enough okay so i feel like that's what's happening here and i feel like for many of you um the you know the staying within that what 10 mile radius from your center of refuge is no longer satisfying for you the jobs might not be available and you need to venture out and then I also feel like there's a sense of um, same old, same old. It's, it's almost like I need more. I need more out of life. Um, I feel like some of you might get the, the spiritual nudge from your guides to kind of venture out. And you feel this sense of like, I'm content where I am. But there's something calling you, nudging you to, to take that, that extra step. And... I feel like you're ignoring it, but this for this week, it's a Mercury retrograde um, period, and a lot of the times, plans that we have, you know, kind of um, thought about, we might have really, you know, tried to like flirt it with a, a, a specific course of action, but then we're just like, no, I don't have the money to do that, or I'm too afraid, or you know, I'll do that next year. This is a really good time to revisit plans that we thought about in the past, but we never um, grab hold of. We never really took seriously, okay? And so a lot of the times, Mercury in retrograde um, can bring a lot of good ideas 
especially revisiting past ideas, revisiting past dreams, past um, just things that you kind of lay on the wayside because you felt like you couldn't do it at the time. So you're getting this nudge and you're definitely getting some type of a push for you to step out of that comfort zone, for you to find a new place of refuge, okay? And for you to trust that things will be okay. I just need to plan things out well, and then I can, you know, finally break away from this 10-mile um, radius, and then I can, you know, move on to this next tower that can serve as my next place of refuge. So... It's a never-ending process, and I feel like it's going to happen for you. So I feel like some of you need to, you know, find new roots. Um, every time I see this card, this is the Eight of Cups moving forward, okay? I think of, like, the dandelion. It's, like, blown in the wind, and then it, it, has, it carries a seed, right? So wherever it lays uh, down on, on the land, wherever it lands, it's going to sprout a new seed. So I feel like that's what you have to do. Just kind of trust the process and just allow yourself to get, you know, catch that wind and then move forward, okay? Um, I definitely feel for some of you, you have been dealing here with an air sign. I have the King of Swords in the picture. It's in the reverse position. So there's definitely... Um, I feel like somebody who is uh, a little bit misleading when they communicate with you, okay? They say one thing, they mean another. And I also feel like this is somebody... I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like there's a fantasy built up around this person. So let's get married. Let's have a family. Let's have a child. Um, let's get engaged, you know, let's move in together. For whatever reason, there was this big, big, grandiose fantasy built around this person. And um, so air signs, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. And I also feel like they might have been, they, they might have another relationship. And there might have been talks even, you know, I'll leave my spouse, I'll leave my wife, or I'll leave my husband, and then we'll start a new life together. Just uh, wait on me and, you know, give me more time, give me more time. So that's an extreme sense, but I do see those conversations between you and, and a person. And I feel like this is the month where you realize that they're keeping you very tethered. They're kind of like that tower. They draw you back. But they really hinder your growth, okay? Or the fantasy that you have is really hindering all the other opportunities that you can have out there. Because what I saw earlier was, it's like a, a grassy field, like a, a field of wheat, and it's a tower. And like, who lives in the tower, right? It doesn't seem like it's very homey or very comfortable, and it seems a little bit isolating because I see you playing outside by yourself. And so it can feel a little bit lonely in this relationship, I feel. Even though you feel like this person will protect me, they're kind of like that fortress of strength and, and you know, stability, but it just doesn't feel to me like you are 100% happy. And then I also feel like for some of you, uh, there are like contract jobs, okay? It's like, the, the let's say the, the job contract, um, there's a company that is retaining you, and they give you um, projects that last like three or four months at a time. And then, you know, like when, when you, you are in the midst of it or when you land that contract, it gives you this really big emotional high. And then one month right before the contract ends, you get into this sense of anxiety. Like, oh my gosh, where's my next paycheck going to come from? I have to scramble. So rather than enjoying the process of completing a project, you know, the satisfaction we get for work that is well done, rather than doing that, you're spending that last month like scrambling around for new work, for new projects, for new contracts, for new, you know, opportunities. And so you're living almost like from paycheck to paycheck, you're living almost like from one provisional time frame. There's a definite start date and there's a definite end date. 
and then you're scrambling for the next start date and the next end date. So it, it feels like you can't really plan anything long term because everything revolves around, you know, start, end date, start, end date. And so you never set down, you never are able to put down roots. You're never able to feel stable and secure. So I don't know what's happening with you guys. Um, but it just seems to me like you're not very grounded and you need that sense of groundedness in order for this anxiety to go away. And so really focus on, you know, what do I need to get that sense of groundedness? And I feel for many of you, um, finding that job that is more long-term rather than contract-based is going to be long-term. And then wherever that job is, be willing to relocate in order to um, give it a chance okay and don't talk yourself out of it because I feel like wherever you are right now I keep seeing you outside in the grass you know in the field like playing um, just by yourself and it, it feels to me like we don't need a lot of people in order to to be happy but I feel like it, it just feels a little empty and I feel like that's not what a Leo person would want you shine your brightest when you're in the company of others. And you shine your brightest when you can share your achievements with other people. And especially with the people that you love, you want to be able to um, share the moment with them, but also see the pride and see the uh, admiration and see the, you know, the love in their eyes. But it just seems like, you know, just playing alone in that field, it can feel a little bit lonely. Um, give me one second. There is another message coming through. I was trying to figure out, you know, the person on the horse, like, chasing you. It, it, I don't see any malice. Like, they're not, you know, going to catch you and kill you or they're not going to hurt you. So it feels like, you know, you were taunting them and then they... I feel like it's somebody who is a love interest. Uh, so for those who are single, yeah, it, it, that makes sense. Um, it seems like it, it seems like it's a love interest, and there is a tug of war. So it could even be an air sign, an Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, and I also feel like maybe even. Um, Maybe even another fire sign because their energy is like very fast. So Sagittarius, Leos, or Aries. But what I feel though is um, there's this you know game that you guys are playing where you both like each other. One person might already be married, hence that tower, that that you know structure, something that's already built but you're flirting with the idea. You might not feel emotionally fulfilled in your relationship. And so you might be seeking the to yourself to kind of break away from whatever has been tethering you. Okay? So, Leos, I hope the message resonates. I hope that it is helpful for you guys. Um, enjoy your Thanksgiving. Mull it over. Sleep on it. Okay? And um, I hope either way that it maybe the message needs to be delivered today because I honestly try to do your reading and Virgo's reading yesterday but nothing came through so I hope this is helpful okay take care of yourself and I'll be back next week